Hello everyone and a very warm welcome. In a previous tutorial, we went ahead and used the XRM toolbox, fetch XML tool and created an XML by querying the annotations entity. In this particular tutorial, we are going to use the fetch XML in a PCF control. Yes, my friends, you heard it right. The Power Apps component framework and display the component on the form. So that being said, let's quickly get into the demo. So here you see that I have got few PDF files which I have queried. The query returns me the PDF files only, okay? So it has a mixture. So there's a form. The form has few files. The files are stored in the annotations database and the annotations database has got few PDF files which I have filtered. Now, I want to go ahead and retrieve these files in a PCF control. If you're new to a PCF control, I recommend that you look at my tutorial series out here. It's a perfect getting started guide. But if you are already familiar with PCF and JavaScript, feel free to follow along. So that being said, we are going to use the web API and we are going to use the retrieve multiple records method. So we need the context and we are going to retrieve multiple records using the web API. It needs an entity logical name. In our case, it's going to be annotations and options. Options is where we go ahead and pass the fetch XML. The other options are not mandatory. It returns as an entity. An entity is an array. And this is what we need to go ahead retrieve from the annotations. It will also return a promise. Now that being said, let's quickly create our PCF control. So here I have a blank folder and I'm going to add a terminal. Going to copy this line and paste it in. So I'm going to initialize a control with the namespace of annotations namespace and the demo name is annotations demo. The template is of type field and I'm going to run npm install so that all the prerequisites get installed. This may take a few seconds. Now that my control has been initialized, the first thing that I need to do is I need to look at the control manifest file. The control manifest file provides you metadata about the control. So first things first, let me get rid of the co commented section. Let me get rid of this as well. If you need to know more about the control manifest file, right? You need to look at my previous tutorial. Not going to get into the nitty gritties out here. Here, I'm going to remove this line. We'll leave out the CSS path. We might use it, we might not, but let it be there for now. But this is where the real magic will happen. We need to uncomment this line. And what we are going to use is the web API. So let me get rid of the others. So this is how our control manifest file should look like. Perfect, right? So it has got the description about our control. It has a constructor, it has a namespace, it has a version number, and it has a description as well. Then it has a property of type sample property. We might not use it, but just leaving it out here. Then we have the index.ts file. This is where the real magic happens or where we are going to write the code. Then you have the annotations demo.css, which is the CSS file, which will be used to decorating our control. And finally, we have the web API, right? So that being said, let's get into the index.ts file. The index.ts file has got the has got the initialization method, then it has the update view method, and then it has the get output method and the destroy. Destroy is for the cleanup. Update view is called whenever a property back changes. So whenever a property in the property back changes, it will be triggered. Initialization is used for initialization of code. In our particular demo, we need to create a new, the method will be used to query the annotations. Now, when I say that, let me create 
a method. So I'm going to create an asynchronous method and it should return me a promise and it should return me an entity, right? I'll name the entity annotation and it should return me some items. So I'll just say return items, right? For now, I think that is good. When I say I want to return the annotations, I will have to define a class. The class will return me all the annotations or all fields, for example, the MIME type, the file name, etc. So I'm going to implement a class which actually will be used in this method. So I'll just do it above the import. So this is my class. This looks good. And this error has been resolved. Now that the error has been resolved, the next step would be to query the endpoint, right? To query and get multiple records using the web API. So to do that, I will first write a line of code. So I need to use the context, right? So let me use underscore context and let me initialize the context. Perfect. So I have the context out here, which I, which can be used in here. However, the next parameter that we had to pass was the query. The query can be found, can be created using the fetch XML, right? So what I will do is I'll create a variable and then I'll go and pass the XML in it. If you look closely, I have escaped it, right? I have added double quotes and replaced double quotes with single quotes such that it can be treated as a string. However, one thing that I do not like out here is that this value is hard coded. Can we somehow get the value dynamically? And the answer is yes, we can get this value dynamically. To get the value, I need to go ahead and get the entity reference. To get the entity reference, I'm going to define a class just below my annotations. I think that's the right place to do it. So I have a class. The class can then be used in the initialization method and we can get the reference with the page context using this code. Now that we have the page reference, the next thing would be to use the entity reference in our method. So I can pass this as a parameter. And I think I can just change it out here. Say dot ID. I'll just use this like that. At this point, I have used my reference and this has been and this has been used as a dynamic value. Now that I have the reference, let me go ahead and create the query and encode it. We need to pass it in an encoding. And this is how we do it. So let me add some error handling with the try catch. So try, if everything succeeds, return me some items, else catch and give me an error. And what do I return from here? I return an empty array if there's an error. Perfect. Now that I have these values set up, next we want to return the items, right? So I'll create the annotations. I'm using the annotations class that I have created and I'm returning items. Finally, I will use the for each loop and return all the things that are required for us and it's going to look like this. So I'm going to go ahead and loop through the results, which is returned by our web API, an asynchronous method call, a sync await, and then I'm going to map each of the things. For example, I'm mapping the file name with the file name which I can use. And finally, I'm pushing it into the file, into the items array, and returning the items. In the next tutorial, we are going to build the UI to complement this. We cannot test the web API using the test harness. Understand this. So the only way to find if our code component works is by actually trying it in the live environment. 
is actually by deploying the PCF into our environment. I hope this quick tutorial was informative. Thank you for your time. Have a great day and bye-bye.